Ti. Hello and welcome to a very special show. Given the very special circumstances we are going through, our guest is Mark Mobius of uh, Franklin Templeton. This is the Mark Mobius exclusive. Well, uh, Mark, thank you very much for joining us at what is a very crucial juncture for India and for emerging markets. It's almost as if there has been a huge global reset. Uh, we've had uh, unexpectedly a Trump victory in the United States, changing the balance for equity investors between developed markets and equity markets. Uh, and as if that was not, uh, emerging markets, and as if that was not enough, uh, uh, we had this complete bolt from the blue from Prime Minister Modi on November the 8th, the same day as Trump was elected, this demonetization. So we have a lot of questions for you. But first up, uh, Mark, demonetization. Uh, do you think it is, everybody is calling it a near-term pain for long-term gain? Is that your view? Well, I think the purpose is very noble. They want to attack corruption, and that's fine. I'm afraid this is not the way to do it, uh, because the big fish usually know what's coming, and they can get away. And as you know, if you look at all the ways that people are getting around this, uh, you'll find that it's not going to be that effective at the end of the day. And of course, it inconveniences a lot of the, the small shopkeepers and other people. So it's really unfortunate that they took this route. I think it would have been better uh, to take another route to attack corruption. But in any case, it's done. And I think it will have an impact on economic growth, maybe half a percent uh, less than what you would expect. And uh, of course, it will tie up businesses for uh, quite a while now, at least until the end of the year. So I think at the end of the day, uh, it's unfortunate that it happened. My big worry, my big worry is is that uh, it may hurt Modi's uh, election in November. Uh, his party may be hurt as a result of that. But let's hope that does not happen because we believe the Modi government's uh, efforts at uh, reform are very, very good. Uh, well, you're right uh, that it's done, so now we cannot uh, debate uh, the whys, uh, but uh, by its very nature, this was a policy that could not have been a national debate and then implemented. Uh, its value, if any, was only if it was uh, uh, introduced suddenly with no one in the loop except maybe uh, the governor and the prime minister. But yeah, as you say, it's done. How many quarters do you think uh, growth would take uh, uh, a beating? Is it just this quarter? Is it this and next or even longer? It will be this quarter and then by the end of the year it will be over. I believe people will have adjusted by that time. Well, uh, there are people who believe that consumption was the only part of uh, the Indian story which was playing out well, not investment. And that's taken a, a, a hit and it could result in job losses at the lower level till confidence comes back. So, you know, how much would you shave off from GDP growth or from earnings growth uh, for that matter? I would say a half a percent is probably uh, what we'll see because it's not going to last very long as we just noted. Uh, be one quarter and uh, overall it'd be about a half a percent. Uh, what do you expect would be uh, the uh, fallout in terms of uh, inflation and interest rates? Well, uh, let us assume out of the 14 trillion rupees that is being changed, about 4 trillion doesn't come because it was tax evaded money. Uh, will that mean a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, crunching of aggregate demand? Are you seeing a big fall in interest rates next year? I'm seeing a fall in interest rates uh, mainly because uh, the Modi government wants that to happen. They want lower interest rates. And I believe the inflation picture is not that dire. Inflation is pretty steady. Uh, and I think they could afford another interest rate cut. So we're seeing that longer term, despite what's happening in the U.S. Now, of course, in the U.S., we are seeing better growth, higher interest rates of the Fed, but I don't think that's going to have a big impact on the uh, direction of where India is going in terms of both inflation and interest rates. Actually, that would be a counter for India. You have to also uh, take into account uh, what the Fed might do. Uh, if you're penciling only one interest rate cut, uh, uh, you don't see a very big uh, consumption. I mean, uh, the expectation was that it would be an interest rate cut led consumption improvement next year. You're not buying that? Uh, no, I'm buying that. I think there's going to be improvement uh, next year, uh, better consumption, lower interest rates, and of course these two 
are aligned, the, this one will affect the other, and I believe that the prime rate has to come down. Uh, we're looking, of course, at the repo rate, uh, but uh, if you look at the gap between the prime rate and the repo rate, it's much too wide. The prime rate has to come down. Well, uh, let me come to the other angle which a lot of people are exploring. Uh, as I was saying, about 14.5 trillion rupees are going to be changed and it's expected that probably 4 or 3 or 5 trillion will not come back. Uh, some people are expecting that that would enable the Reserve Bank to give a large dividend to the government and therefore a big fiscal stimulus could be on its way next year. One, are you buying that argument? And two, what would be the implication as a stock picker? Uh, yes, I am buying that argument. And I think it will be very positive going forward for the economy if the government is able to effectively invest in infrastructure and accelerate all the infrastructure projects. This would be very, very good for the economy. As you know, this is one of the big barriers that India faces in terms of uh, growth, to accelerate growth. Mind you, growth rates in India are very, very good, among the highest in the world, but they can even go higher with a better infrastructure. Uh, do you expect this move to result in some kind of a fiscal surplus next year as the informal economy gets formalized or for whatever reasons people are too scared now to jump taxes? I think there could be uh, on, on the margin, but I don't think this would be a, a huge factor because the government will want to get that money out into the economy. So uh, they would want to not have a big surplus and get that money spent. And the other factor here, by the way, is the influx of money going into the banks means, as Mr. Modi has already mentioned, that the banks should be able to accelerate the lending for investment. So that's another factor which we should be aware of. Well, I know we have to discuss another much bigger elephant in the room, the Trump election. But before that, purely because of the demonetization, the expected rate cut, the expected fiscal stimulus, how would you uh, change your views as an investor? Which kind of stocks would you prefer? Well, I think we have to look at the banks, <laughs> first of all, because of the spread that they're uh, having right now it becomes very, very profitable for the banks. And I think the IT sector has been uh, hit too hard. The prices have come down uh, too much and there's an opportunity there as well. And of course at the end of the day yeah. any consumer oriented stocks are interesting. Well I would obviously want to ask your views on the IT sector even depending on your view on Trump and his impact on uh, uh, imaging markets. But uh, uh, when you say uh, uh, banks, the actually the stocks that ran this year were the non-bank finance companies. Uh, so bank is really large. Uh, there are the public sector banks which could get a recapitalization push if that uh, 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 extra money is available to the government. There are the private sector banks uh, which largely are out of infrastructure. Then of course there are the non-bank finance companies. Which leg are you now positive on? Well, I would say since these non-bank financial institutions have had their run, now it's time to look at some of the big banks, uh, state-owned banks and the other big private banks. Uh, well, uh, Mark, I have to take a break, but uh, thereafter, the real big question that 2017 will grapple with uh, President Trump will be sworn in on January 20th. And what will he do to the global economy, global trade, emerging markets, and therefore your view on Indian stocks? Coming back in a minute. <laughs> back to our Mark Mobius exclusive. I've been speaking to Mark Mobius, clearly the veteran emerging market investor and of course a veteran on India as well. Mark, uh, we didn't discuss Trump so far. Let's start over there. At the moment, we are seeing a, a lot of money being pulled out of the EM. Or okay, not a lot of money, some money being pulled out of EMs. Do you think that this is going to accelerate as a uh, uh, President-elect Trump takes over and becomes President Trump? I don't think it's going to accelerate. Uh, we've come down roughly about 6% in terms of money uh, drawn out from emerging markets. Very similar to what happened around the Brexit time, if you remember that. It was a time of uncertainty. Uh, I think that money is going to be coming back for a number of reasons. But first of all, Trump stands for growth. Growth of the U.S. economy. So we expect uh, growth in the U.S. to accelerate. And secondly, I don't believe that the U.S. dollar is going to remain strong for very long. 
I think Trump's interest will be to have a weaker dollar so that U.S. industries can export more. So this is another area we have to watch very carefully. Even though interest rates in America will rise, uh, this is a situation which will be very interesting for the world because with the growing U.S. economy, there'll be a lot more money to be invested overseas, including emerging markets. Uh, well, uh, I know you wouldn't be wanting to take a bet on the point of the currency, but uh, we've seen the dollar in a one-way street. It's now a 14-year high. If I only looked at the dollar index at close to 102, uh, you think that it is speaking out and that uh, 2017 actually will see the dollar below 100? I think so. I don't know about below 100, but I don't think it's going to go very much higher than we have now, simply because Trump does not want that to happen. He will want a dollar that's competitive. And of course, all the talk about uh, uh, countries uh, manipulating their currencies is coming to the fore in this administration. And there'll be a very, very close look at where the dollar stands in relation to other countries. Uh, well, actually, uh, you know, like you pointed out, Trump is seen as uh, the president for growth and uh, the uh, narrative appears to be that he's going to invest in infrastructure. Will that therefore change your pecking order in emerging markets? Will it be more pro-commodity producing emerging markets? Uh, there's no question that commodities will be helped by the big infrastructure spending in the U.S., but not by that much, because if you look at the totality of uh, consumption of commodities globally, China still is the king. They are the biggest consumer. Uh, the U.S. can increase, but it will not have a very big, big impact the way that China's had in the last 10 years. Well, I'm coming to China in a minute, but just let me finish the Trump argument. You know, very recently, in the past few uh, hours and days, uh, President-elect Trump has made uh, statements about uh, stricter immigration rules, uh, H-1B visas on which the Indian ID sector depends so much. Uh, but, you know, but it's been a double-edged sword. There are some people who think that BFSI, the banking sector, actually globally will do well under Trump because of his pro-growth policies and therefore IT could do well. Are you an IT buyer at this juncture? Do you think Indian IT has, uh, is at attractive levels? Yeah, I think the IT sector in India has been beaten down quite a lot and provides an opportunity to buy. Uh, I think Trump policies will not have a big impact on the IT sector like manufacturing exporters from India and other parts of the world might have. And by the way, the whole trade policy is up for grabs. One of the interesting aspects of the Trump administration is that there will be a lot more emphasis on bargaining at the individual country level. Uh, it will be a de-emphasis of multilateral agreements and an emphasis on bilateral agreements, which can be very good for countries like India and others who have special needs, special requirements. They can sit down with the Trump administration and reach agreement on a number of issues, and that would include IT and other areas. Uh, well, let me come to the other, if you please, uh, uh, elephant in the room, China. Uh, are you looking at uh, uh, China to destabilize the uh, world economy any time in 2017, uh, like we saw in Jan of 2016, or will China be a growth factor? What's the China impact on emerging markets and on global markets? Well, as you know, China continues to grow at a very high rate for an economy of that size. Uh, if you take a number, whether it be 5, 6, or 7 percent, there's a lot of debate, as you know, about the actual growth rate. But even at those levels, uh, lower levels than they were in 2010, for example, the amount of dollars being spent in the China economy is much greater than it was in 2010 and in previous years. So China will still become and will continue to be a growth factor for Asia in particular and other countries around the world. As you know, China is putting a lot of money outside. Uh, there's been a rush to get rid of RMB, as you know. Uh, the RMB has been uh, getting weaker against the U.S. dollar, and uh, Chinese investors are putting their money overseas, converting them into assets and converting them into U.S. dollars and other currencies. So I think that will continue for a while, uh, but it's probably uh, peaking at this stage. Okay, well, actually, uh, uh, let's put all this together for the Indian investor community. Uh, uh,
in the first place we've lost what uh, uh, 12% from the highs that we had touched uh, nearly 9000 levels we are now sitting sub 8000 uh, do you think the indian markets can go down further on a mix of trump and demonetization and what have you i don't think so i think uh, we've more or less reached the bottom and we'll probably see recovery in the indian market you must remember the us market is now surging ahead and the us market leads other markets and uh, we believe there's some correlation between what happens in the us and other countries with more and more money being made in the us market of course fund managers and other investors will want to balance their portfolio uh, with emerging markets uh, investments including india so mark uh, what will you add to india given uh, the scenario you have painted for us in terms of fiscal stimulus uh, in trade cuts uh, trumps uh, uh, policies and chinese uh, uh, growth numbers uh, which are the ad additional sectors that will that you will incrementally add to in india well what we are particularly focused on and very interested in is the smaller area the smaller company area small and medium sized industries that are in the consumer area in specialized manufacturing in pharmaceuticals in many of these mm -hmm. other industries which have been pretty much overlooked and now is the time to start looking at those because very exciting things are happening in these companies okay so it's going to be a bottom up uh, story for you uh, you earlier in the conversation mentioned banks uh, would you get into you know uh, incrementally on a state bank of india or a punjab national bank uh, uh, among the macros probably because uh, you know they benefit from fiscal and monetary stimulus exactly the money pouring into these banks and the spread that they're enjoying uh, should be very beneficial for their profitability uh, so yeah i would we look at those banks and others uh, in the indian economy uh, well what about the consumption stories uh, we did have uh, you know the, the likes of asian paints uh, the uh, uh, or an hdfc bank that services consumption uh, or a, a bunch of uh, ndfcs like uh, bajaj finance uh, which serve consumption how do you play the consumption theme would they be consumer companies would they be consumer finances what do you like in that space uh, well okay, i think consumer finances have maybe gone a little bit too far at this stage of the game so i would prefer to go to the medium and smaller consumer plays companies that are producing products that people want and will be buying uh, at the uh, supermarkets and other retail outlets and of course we must not overlook the online surge that's taking place in india and globally and many of these online sellers will be very interesting going forward of course there'll be many failures but uh, if we can pick the winners it will be very very profitable will you at all play the investment team you know the larsons of the world uh, because of the fiscal stimulus expectation yes i mean if you look at the fiscal stimulus and the infrastructure spending it would be very interesting to go into some of the construction plays of course the problem and this is a, not only a problem with india but globally going into construction companies uh, carries many many risks because of the uh, kind of business they are running and the extracurricular activities they have to engage in in order to get contracts etc cetera, etc cetera. so we have to be very careful but if we can find the right companies in infrastructure uh, they would be very very good well there's only one sector i didn't ask you uh, the big oil and gas sector uh, does that still hold uh, any attraction to you they were the 2015 plays they haven't done much in 2016 but uh, is there any interest interest all the way from a reliance to the state owned bpcls and the ongcs anything that interests you in that space well yes as you know there's been quite a recovery in oil prices even though we're still at very low levels I still think that we might reach 60 dollars a barrel globally but that remains to be seen. At these prices uh it's very iffy if uh, a company is engaged in very expensive offshore drilling or any kind of a high value uh, deep sea or uh, deep well drilling. So I would be very careful in this area and emphasize companies that are diversified, particularly those that have a retail base because many of these oil companies are really consumer plays rather than a pure oil and gas 
So that's the way I would play it. Well, one final question to you, Mark. Uh, you know, 2016 actually has given perhaps only 10% gains at an index level for an equity investor, but probably given 30 to 40% uh, returns for a bond investor in India. What will be the mix uh, in 2017? Uh, how much can an equity investor gain? I think uh, we could do better than 10% going forward because of what my expectation is as regards what's going to happen in the U.S. and how that will affect the global economy. So we're looking at maybe 15% or more uh, returns if we play it right. All right. Yes, if we play it right. Uh, uh, Mark Mobius, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, the key takeaway is actually pretty positive. Uh, the Trumponomics might actually play positively for emerging markets, especially for markets like India. Demonetization also could be a longer term gain as uh, Mark sees it, though he doesn't think it's a, a very wise idea, not a well thought through idea. But positive on equities could make 15%. But the big uh, 